you seen Natalie Wood? This little party needs a pick-me-up. Was that a lot? That felt like a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should just move on. Quilt people of the electorate, welcome back. <laughs> I've taken a little bit of a tiny little break just because I've been in mad, mad, mad designing kind of tornado. Anyways, I'm excited to show you what I've been working on, but uh, I'm also excited about today's video because I'm gonna kind of show you some of my process in terms of like how do I see, right, a quilt pattern and how do I begin that initial, that initial process of seeing and designing a brand new quilt pattern, okay? So let me show you just a little bit about that. So it's super interesting for me to start to work on designing a quilt because I was talking to a friend the other day and they were like, well, how do you come up with these ideas? And I'm like, how can you not see what's clearly right in front of you? Like, <laughs> there's quilt patterns everywhere. So I'm excited to dive into this with you and to also show you a little bit of what I've been working with me with my new fabric line, okay? So this one is already done, it's called Prairie Prep prairie pastures and um, I think that it works kind of good in that it kind of shows you all the colors of a prairie as well as giving you that kind of windmill effect um, and I think that it's uh, quite effective I'm very excited about that ah but I just finished another one today that I don't have a name for um, that I'm excited to share with you let's see go this way I guess So this one I just did is uh, a red, white, and blue. And what I think is kind of fun about it is all um, kind of bubbles, right? And I'll show you a close-up of that. But uh, it, how, because it's kind of directional in the fabric. Um, and so once you get up close, you can see that a little bit better. But I really like this. It's kind of Southwestern. Um, it's kind of red, white, and blue. So I think that that's pretty cool. And it's another one of my original designs. So um, I wanted to kind of just walk around like the house. Like, I don't know why or how my brain works this way, but I see, see quilt patterns. And maybe you're the same way. Like I see quilt patterns in virtually everything I look at, right? And so I can look and get inspiration for a new design virtually anywhere. So I have nothing uh, kind of preconceived in my brain. We're just gonna go walk around my house and we're gonna design some new quilt patterns based off of what I see. All right, we're gonna head into the house and just kind of look for things and see what we find. Um, and welcome to my house. All right. Hello, kids. Uh, no, they're here somewhere. You can you can hear them. <laughs> I just can't get them in the shop right now. So, um, looking around the house, looking around the house, looking around the house. The first thing I kind of see is this cabinet down here, right? Can you see that cabinet? I'm kind of inspired by the shapes of that, right? Let me get a close-up of that. So the first thing I kind of look for in uh, a quilt design is rhythm, right? And I've talked about this a lot in terms of the rhythm of design, right? And so this cabinet is giving me one right here, whereas it's giving me three over here. So that comes into one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And that's what that rhythm sounds like. And so if I'm trying to gain uh, that type of effect, right, a solid one next to a three is really uh, an interesting way to go, right? Another option might be as if you wanted to get a, like a four, two, three, four, I guess a three. One, 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 right? And so on the one side, you have four going, and the other side you have three going, right? So uh, one, two, three, one. One, 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 
right? And so that you incorporate on one side the equidistance of a four to the equidistance of a three. And that's also super interesting to me to look at something like that visually, right? In order to gain the rhythm, like I did in the uh, moon and the koi in the moonlight, uh, that was a really interesting rhythm in the way that that shaked out. Uh, just because I'd never really seen it used before. And so it went full, half, half, right? Again, uh, kind of diminishing, right? Or increasing in sound. So it was like one, 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 right? And so that's how I will often look at a pattern, right? And kind of see what um, it's offering in terms of its visual rhythm. And I'll also try and uh, play that out just a little bit uh, in terms of like actually working it out. you know, that way. Um, so I'm transposing something visual into an effect uh, essentially that I can hear to better understand it and to better understand how it's gonna then look visually. Okay, let's look at one more example of that. All right, continuing around the house. Uh, I did just see the shower in here in our second bathroom that I'm also kind of digging for that same purpose. Hold on one second. All right, so our tile work here in the second uh, bathroom, right, is giving us a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And so that you, as you play that down, you're getting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And so that's the actual way that you would play uh, this pattern, which is also really interesting when you look at it um, contrasted to the tile on the floor. All right, let's take a look at that. John's gonna be like, what the hell are you doing now? <laughs> right, so when you compare that, right, you're getting that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then I kind of see this down here as being the one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's only hitting on the ones, whereas this is hitting on the one and three, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And so that's the kind of, rhythm that I'm visually getting from this that will inform, uh, there we go, that will inform uh, how I see this visually going when I want to, again, create a pattern that in my head sounds like something but then is transposed into a visual uh, representation of that. Okay, so let's look at um, some other things we can find around the house. All right, check it out. This is our nightstand. And as you can see, this represents the one, and then this is twice as big. So it would be written kind of in a five, four, where this is one, two, three, four, five. 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 So then that's how that would sound, right? When you look at it with the one being here and then twice, right? So a five, four is kind of, uh, interesting, so long as you know how to use it. It's like a seven, eight, right? Anything that has kind of off, uh, just a little bit like that makes sense if you use it in the right context. But sometimes if you just kind of leave it loose without any kind of, um, you know, reference to a flatness, right? Or a, uh, what do they call it in architecture? Um, like a visual representation of flat, right? Or visual visual representation of uh, horizontal or vertical so that it can kind of anchor itself next to something that is known, right? Because uh, all patterns need to be somewhat relatable, right? And relatable meaning that you can, it's something in your past that you know, right? And there's certain cues that we all have in terms of what is what. Right? Like it's just this the society we live in, right? And so if you have um, a registration point, right, that makes sense to most people's brain and they can actually uh, tie a reference to it, then it becomes more comfortable to them visually. Whereas if you just kind of lead, and there's there's rooms, there's lots of room to lead with a 5-4, right, or other uh, visual representations of that that are somewhat off but giving it um, a registration mark, right? Or um, some type of plane to put it up against makes it more comfortable for most people. 
And again, if you wanna just do something that's jarring for the sake of being jarring, that's cool too, but just know that that's what you're doing as opposed to uh, giving people a more comfortable, a comfortable approach, which is often what people are looking for in quilt design, right? We're looking for comfort, right? And so that's a lot of times uh, what we'll employ there. But I just thought this was interesting as a 5-4 kind of, you know, way to represent things uh, visually like you'd use in quilt design. Okay, so taking visual cues off of plants is often a really good way to start, right? Because it gives you kind of that um, sacred geometry type of work in it, uh, which is not so easy sometimes to extract. But if you break it down to its... Uh, kind of lowest common denominator, uh, you can do that. Now, this is a plastic plant, right? And so what I'm getting from this design, whoever created this, is two small ones, then two, then two, then two. And again, this is obviously not, you know, true sacred geometry, but it is uh, a reference point that I can use visually for opposing too small, opposing too medium, opposing too large, that then gets into, you know, other ways of representing the large in kind Kind of a backbeat kind of way that continues to do that. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? All the way around there, but keeping these ones um, large, right? And so how you'd represent that would be either a big color or a way of kind of denoting uh, the uh, monotonous beat, right? That's in the background. So that's that. Uh, let's see what else we can find. All right, this is the window above my sink. Right, and so all of these points across the uh, across this way are giving me the exact same idea. Right, the visual geometry of it is to boop, 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 boop. Right, it's solid across here, but then uh, you get all of these crossways that are not only heading horizontally, but you're, I'm getting a bunch of diagonals, right? Can you see the diagonal work in it as well? So that would be kind of a way that would inform me visually of what could be really interesting if I take a photo of it and then just use a portion of it. All right, now we're in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just looking around for items that I think, you know, could really work. And I was looking at the weave of this hat, right? And how it kind of creates arrows that not only keep heading the same way, but then are kind of... Um, broken up by these horizontal lines, right? So that could be either a really interesting quilt pattern going this way, right? Do you see that, right? Or this way might be really interesting. In fact, it might be really cool if they were going both ways, right? Just to add a different rhythm and also to um, just have more visual movement in the whole thing rather than having them head the same way, okay? So that's uh, one idea as well. All right, moving on. I find the sole of this boot really interesting, right? In that it has kind of regular, you know, just quilt patches here, and they're kind of done with this arching, you know, idea. What I think would be really cool and how I'd kind of translate this, I think, would be to take, I really like the top kind of elliptical, um, you know, top of an oval here that's happening. And then I would probably keep that going down here, almost like an Easter egg, right? But then I, I really dig these bold uh, lines as well. So I'd kind of find how to use those um, in a way that would uh, incorporate all this and then flank it with these, look at these big chunky pieces, right? around the edge that I think is uh, pretty cool. And so I'd try and incorporate all of that into it as well. All right, Bridget's gonna help me with this one. She wanted a little cuddle. <laughs> She's so cute. Okay, uh, but then this plant here, I'm super, like, I think that's really cool and would really love to dive into how do you make like almost a paper piece, a kind of fan that would then go in different directions, especially in like a six point or a five point, I think would be really interesting. Five point or a six point a star, uh, I mean. But I, I really love, right, like how you're getting this effect um, through these leaves. And so I'd want to take a picture of that and then play with it and reverse it and kind of, you know, see what I could do with it in the computer in order to come up with um, an original design. 
Okay, building on that just a little bit more, now we can see how, you know, the baseline rhythm, right, of the fence going along would be kind of one way of holding, you know, things visually, but then interspersing, like say the tree here, right, or some other, you know, bush or something that we use down here in order to kind of contrast that with um, what's going on with the fence, right? And so I would try and, like even like these big bold trees in the back, right, see how I could do just, you know, an easy rhythm through here and then insert these, you know, big pole, big pole, big pole, and look at the distance between, because you're getting like a half, right, between this tree and this tree, and then you're getting a full between this one and this one, and see how I could uh, use these little notes, right, of the fence uh, versus the larger ones of uh, the trees here and the way that those are interacting I think would be really interesting to play with those and see how I could um, incorporate the, the juxtaposition right of the constant small right with the bigger uh, every so often I think that would be really interesting as well all right, and then the last thing I want to focus on is what I'm seeing here in the um, kind of toaster oven that we have here Right, and so I find it really interesting how you have this long pan under here versus the kind of um, even evenness of what's on top of it. And so to compose like that against this, right, I think would be really interesting in the way that you could visually break that up uh, to represent that, right? And so let me just take a picture of it and I'll show you. So those are some just basic ideas and that's just kind of one method that I use as far as translating or transposing, you know, a visual rhythm into an actual quilt pattern, right? Now there's a bunch of other ways that I have, you know, like I, sometimes I'll just visually see something like my lined Leah uh, pattern that was actually direct off of a lamp that I saw in a movie theater, <laughs> just up on the wall. And I'm like, oh my God, that's a quilt pattern right there. Uh, and so sometimes visually you just see it already written, right? And you just have to extrapolate the information from say that lamp or whatever it is that you see already visually um, and then transpose it into fabric, right? And so that's one way to go, but also I just kind of wanted to let you know about the whole transposing music into quilts, uh, which I also find really interesting. And so we'll uh, you know, maybe take another look at this uh, later down the road, but I wanted to just start with this, um, since this is kind of the groove that I'm in right now, as far as designing brand new quilt patterns for my new fabric line. I hope that you found that interesting, and as always, please go vote tomorrow. It is election day, and this is really important. I hope that you get out there and make your voice known. That is, of course, unless you're planning on voting for the party that writes 100% of the anti-LGBTQ plus legislation. Okay. Talk to you next time.